Hello. Well, today for the last uh, film I'm going to talk about for October, I wanted to just uh, talk a bit about My Bloody Valentine. Uh, this is the new release from uh, <coughs> Shout Factory, or, oh, I'm sorry, Shout Studios, because they changed the name. Don't know. Exactly. Well, this is, of course, through their uh, Scream Factory title, because, you know, scary. Uh, but, you know, this uh, I wanted to get this release originally for the, the Blu-ray, but then, hey, they have a new 4K version, so why not get that? Um, I wasn't able to get the poster that came with this, like one of the options, is because, well, anytime you, I went to pick that version for insert reason here it would never it would just have some error and would never explain what the problem was um only conclusion i have is too many people at the exact same time uh kept trying to get that yeah same thing with, with the movie and the poster and so too much traffic and probably very few were able to uh, get that ordered this was a pre-order too, so yeah. Uh, so this will probably be in my uh, later in the year uh, update video, even though I guess to some extent this could be totally worthless because here you go, I have it now. But whatever. Um, yeah, this is a film which is a. Uh, uh, it was released by Paramount. Which of course released the Friday the 13th films up until 8 at which point they were they totally uh, <clears throat> caved to their embarrassment of uh, having that franchise and sold it basically to uh, uh, New Line Cinema except for the name Friday the 13th they still own that but anyway a year after the original Friday the 13th came out as well as uh the year uh, the second film in that franchise came out, My Bloody Valentine was released. And, uh, well, <laughs> as it says right here, I think it pretty much sums it up quite well. On Valentine's Day, someone always loses their heart. 20 years ago, this small town lost more than that. When super supervisors abandoned their post to attend the town annual holiday dance. <clears throat> Let me try that again. When supervisors abandoned their post to attend the uh, town's annual holiday dance, a tragedy came that uh, claimed the lives of five minors. The sole survivor, Harry Warden, was institutionalized but returned uh, for a vengeful massacre on the disaster's first anniversary. So yeah, uh, Harry Warden was not happy. And also, he uh, was eating the uh, remains of uh, his fellow miners because, well, that's partially why he was uh, able to be the sole survivor since, you know, he, uh, they were, uh, uh, according to the story, it took them six weeks to be able to get to them. And so, yeah, if you want to live, I guess that would have to, Something drastic like that would probably have to uh, uh, be the case. Though well, I'm not one for cannibalism, thankfully. I hope you aren't either, but if so, I hope you stay away from me forever. Uh, Nineteen years later, the town is gearing up for another Valentine's Day party. Sweethearts TJ and Sarah, along with their friend Axel, are among the excited party-goers. Oh, with a box, box of candy containing an eerie warning and blood-soaked heart uh, arrive, the town folk realize the romance is as good as dead. And so are they. And, yeah. You know, one thing about this is uh, the, the character of TJ, uh, he left uh, town uh, to go to California to for uh, uh, school, try to 
make it out there. Even though we don't exactly know all the details, we can just assume he failed and came back home, at which point he had to work in the mine, which he didn't does not like. He hates it. His friend, Ac there, his friend Axel is now uh, going out with Sarah, which, he's, which also annoys him. Of course, he didn't write or say anything. He kind of just took off and went to school and then comes back to find his uh, girlfriend is now dating a very good friend of his and so that's not a something he's happy about <clears throat> and uh, this has uh, the uh, theatrical and uh, uncut version uh, the 4k disc as just the uh, uncut version and uh, special features on here are really good um, this is a very uh, a, a very good film um, if you in, are into slasher films but if you're not then I don't know you might want to pass on this but this uh The uncut version has, is 93 minutes, the theatrical is 90, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so it says, My Bloody Valentine stands up with ca uh, Black Christmas as the best Canada has to offer in the off-slighted uh, slasher horror subgenre. Um, because, yeah, Black Christmas was made in Canada. <clears throat> um, though... Some of the performers, like John Saxton, for instance, um, is American. Bob Clark was also American. Um, I know Bob Clark lived in Canada. I can't recall if he became Canadian. But, yeah, all the actors, actresses, and uh, people uh, behind the scenes overall are Canadian in here. So I believe the only real Americans... Uh, that had anything to really do with this film was um, <clears throat> so that people who do, did some of the uh, effects and kills, like for the makeup. And yeah, this is a. Uh, you know, in a way, for 80s horror, you could say this is very standard stuff. But, you know, again. <clears throat> uh, this is just a, I don't know, a very fantastic film. Um, there is a remake that I have seen, um, which is what it is. It was fine. Uh, it's interesting. I've, I've seen the My Bloody Valentine remake. I believe I have it on DVD, honestly, somewhere. And I remember seeing the original around the time I saw that, and I enjoyed this film more. But I thought the remake was fine. Of course, you know, all these years later, I'm, I probably could uh, probably watch it, and my opinion might be very different because um, I haven't really watched it many times. So honestly, that might actually say all their that really might be all very telling honestly you know says everything right there um watched it a few times once i got it and then i haven't really watched it since um i think uh you know one thing i like about this and black christmas is there was no sequels as i've heard for black christmas they tried to expand upon the killer to an extent and for the 2006 remake <clears throat> and then the newest remake which seems to have nothing really to do too much beyond it being like a sorority uh, 
a uh, place for girls being like stuck and stuff. It's just, yeah. This film, you know, it definitely had, uh, had a very good atmosphere. Uh, it was filmed in an actual mine, um, which was actually quite dangerous. Um, also, you know, you have to be very uh, aware and very uh, <clears throat> wary of certain things as to not, uh, especially because of like the methane, uh, you know, that can be found down there or that can be there, you know, you gotta be very careful. Um, and, uh, you know, it was very, it was not the best thing to really, I guess, film in, but, you know, they had an opportunity to film in a mine, they took it, and, uh, yeah, there is a, a kill, even to this day, that remains gone, um, in a way, it's sort of like the Friday the 13th 2, uh, death with, uh, people, like, making love on the, to get out of the bed, and they get impaled, um, A situation like that uh, happens in the film, but we don't really get to see it because, like, it just, like, the way it was cut out seemed as too violent. And all these years later, like, the, it's just not, uh, I believe, like, it just is in a very good condition if at all. But yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate how some scenes like that, that get cut. Where you try to put it, uh, things back in, like all the uh, kills, like for uncut um, versions, he some things have to remain cut because you know they either they are lost or the film has degraded so badly you can't really repair it without it being uh, glaringly obvious that the. This footage does not totally fit uh, exactly with the rest, where everything has been properly restored. This is the best uh, restoration this scene can get because of just, you know, if it's found, it's just been so badly uh, deteriorated for some reason. And uh, this is the best we've got, where other kills, you know, might be fine. But yeah, it seems to be that's just lost unfortunately that was a big roundabout way of saying it's lost it's gone but even with friday the 13th 2 when you get to see more of that scene um of the, the similar answers even though there's no audio you get to see it more and you can pretty much uh, gather and guess all the dying sounds and everything of uh, that uh, that moment um, yeah this is a this is quite a film you know it's a Harry Warren guy he doesn't really want anybody to celebrate uh, Valentine's Day uh, especially in the form of a party and so uh those involved to make that happen. They are not uh, this, this guy is not pleased. Or is it Harry? Well, if you haven't seen the film, yeah, I think it's worth a watch. Um, you know, if you like horror. Um, I thought if being that this is a horror <laughs> type month, it'd be good to look back on a film that I've enjoyed and I'm happy to have this in my uh, collection um, yeah it's it's a this is a very good film uh, some really cool uh, 80s horror uh, you know there's a lot of there seems to be a lot of decades where that <clears throat> for one reason or another, there's like there's very something specifically notable 
like the seventies had a lot of gritty, realistic uh, stuff going on with them uh, with with the films. The eighties had a lot of slashers. I mean, slasher films had been around for quite some time, at least what we consider slasher films now. Um, uh, this is a a film that is very good. It's uh, very well made. Uh, everybody in it did the best job, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it it looks it looks very well. It looks very good. Um, I just. Uh, I, I just enjoy uh, watching it and uh, uh, rewatching it. Yeah, and all the special features this uh, has is uh, truly great. Um, yeah, this has the thirty-fifth anniversary cast reunion panel. Somebody, uh, <clears throat> you know, performs a song that appears during the credits. Um, uh, yeah. And a whole bunch of interviews with uh, uh, various uh, people. Uh, actors, actresses, uh, the director... Very good film. Um, if you haven't seen this film, and you are a horror fan, I think it's well worth getting. Uh, there you go. You can watch this on Valentine's Day, and then for Christmas you can watch, uh, you know, Black Christmas or Silent Night, Deadly Night, whichever you prefer. But yeah, this is a. Uh, a truly happy uh, Valentine's Day film, if, uh, if there ever was one. May not be necessarily a rom com, but there is some definitely uh, romantic elements in there. You know, love triangle, for instance. Oh, who doesn't love one of those? And then you got a guy in a <coughs> miner's uh, outfit with a, uh, like the breathe and goggles and all that, and uh, going around with a pickaxe and other such instruments and uh, killing people. So, you know, what more could you ask for? And there's also some humor, so that's always a plus. It's always nice to have somebody or something to uh, with humor to interject in the movie like that's dark and like this. But, uh, yeah. Very good film. Um, yeah. Hope, uh, hope this was interesting. I know I kind of rambled there, which, if you have, uh, watched my stuff, uh, for any number of, uh, amount of time, you'll probably figure that out, but, you know, I try to stay on topic, and I think I... It's pretty successful here. Uh, I hope so. If not, well, that sucks. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I hope all of you are doing well. Hope your uh, October has been good. Hope uh, if you're into horror, you've seen as many good horror films, be it new or old. Um, this was fun. It's always fun to talk about stuff like this. I hope all of you are doing well. And uh, I just uh, hope your weekend will be good too. Um, so yeah, have a great night. Have a great weekend and a great week. See you all next time. Take care. And, uh, yeah, goodbye.